it's uh, David Beck here. Uh, before we could go into Banish today and I could show you a few of the strategies I've developed whilst playing. So I guess we'll go for a new map. Uh, so yeah, I guess you can see. Oh, what should we call it? I don't know. Testerland. Sounds good. <laughs> Love to live in Testerland. Okay, so I'm actually playing the better version of the game, and this introduced a few new features. Uh, I suppose most notably, you can now control how much leather and wool you can collect. Previously, this could destroy your whole village or town, because, well, you just build a huge amount of leather and wool, and that would kind of block up all your stock houses. So, yeah, this this is a very, very useful new feature. There's a few other minor tweaks, which... I won't go into too much, but well, I can go as we go along. Uh, so you can, if you're playing with Steam, you can get the better version by going into the properties of this game, you know, right-clicking, and just selecting better version, really. Pace and she loads. Okay, it seems to take quite a while. I suppose I did choose a large map. I suppose that that might not help. So yeah, I've played this game quite a lot. It's um it's a really good game. It's kind of system building, which is kind of what I like. You know, you've got to try to create a system which, you know, keeps everybody happy and healthy. Um there's a few different strategies I really use. I suppose of course my strategy is getting a good supply of uh firewood. Because firewood's incredibly useful for trading and obviously for keeping people warm. And the whole industry based around this is uh, very good for sort of building up your country quite well. I suppose... Okay, here we go. So, first thing, I always like to stop, have a little look around. It's quite nice. Um, quite a nice bit of forest here. It's quite a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at this. This is really good. Okay, first things first. Obviously, you can look at the achievements and go with whatever achievement you want. But typically, I guess I'll put down some pathing. Um, and I'll probably get some farms. Okay, quite importantly, I go for 10 by 12. And I have one worker per 10 by 12. Oh dear. Okay, sorry, it's 12 over and 10 down. I'm awfully sorry. I haven't played this for a little bit. So the great thing about 10 by 12 is... Well, I've played a lot of games and this seems to be pretty optimal, actually. I've tried other sizes, but 10 by 12 is um, it's pretty darn good, actually. So, there are four food types. Oh, look, I've got beans. Beans are fantastic. Because, um, typically you harvest more per year. They don't go um, as quickly in the winter. Very useful food source. So, as I was saying, yeah, there are four food types. So, fruit, vegetables, grains, and protein. Protein counts as either meat or nuts. So, it's quite important to get enough of them if you want your people to be healthy, which I assume you do, because a healthy person is a productive person. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm going to play this. Um, maybe we'll... Okay, what am I doing? Okay, I'm getting my um, UI set up, so... Okay, that's good. We don't need the map, really. We'll have this down here. This tells you who should do what. So builders, I'll get four of them. Nobody's got a home. Oh, we need a farmer, of course. Okay, I guess we can speed up the game now. There we go. Ten, nice and fast. Again, remember to set the number of people before. So we'll go for cabbage. Have another bean, I think. Um, so now we need a total of three farmers. Pretty soon this will be gone, and I'll put some houses down. 
Uh, okay, and I'll pause this just quickly. There we go. You can also control the number of people working in a particular profession here. So I've got four people farming on four pretty large 10 by 12 plots. And let's choose cabbage. Cabbage is delicious. Um, so obviously winter's coming. It's going to get cold. So I'll zoom out a bit, I think. Maybe I'll stick one of these down. No, maybe I won't. Um, let's get some houses down. So I think I'll go for two of these. These are um, stone houses. The big advantage of stone houses is the stay warmer. So we're going for four houses, I think. Oh, let's go for another one. So we've got four engineers, two labourers. Let's change it to three and three. We're looking at our resources. We've got quite a lot of stone, of iron, of wood. So the next thing we're going to need is... Okay, I guess we could gather some iron from here, some stone from here. Just in case we get low. We're working on wood. Oh look, we're out of um, stone, so... Yep, we can absorb this into our little village part. Okay. Oh, so we've got more people. I guess people must have come of age. <laughs> um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to build wood chopper. These are extremely efficient. Like I mentioned before, this is largely the basis of the healthy economy is wood chopping. And I okay, for a two few different methods you can use. I'm gonna go for a forest lodge here. And I'll tell you why. Well I kinda of think when you first start out, to um, get the most amount of food, you've got the farms which will evolve, provide bulk. But we got your forest lodge here. I also Where is it? There we go, Gavra's hut. So we've obviously they're not going to be gathering here, but you should still get a fairly productive um, yield, I suppose. So okay, the houses are built. They're bringing in the stone. So this is quite a nice little village. Um, we should get a good source of wood from here and it should also maintain the forest. The next thing to do is obviously to remove the stone and the iron. Does anybody like stone or iron? But yeah, you'll get rid of that and it'll um, make um, the collection of wood more efficient and everybody loves wood. So, okay. I guess this is going pretty well. Now what I'm going to do next is stick in a few orchards, I think. So if you look, we've got quite a few labourers. So I like to do it 15 by 4 long ways. Um, kind of read on the internet, and that's quite a good thing to do. Oh, okay, what's this telling me? So something is full up, storage, feed logs, etc. Okay, so that'll be here. So I guess we can make another one of them. It's probably because they've run out of things to build. Oh no, they haven't. So, okay, at the beginning of the game, everybody's healthy, everybody's um, happy. Some people are going to be very productive, but this will kind of fall off later unless you maintain it. So, at the moment, we don't have a source of protein. Like I say, there are four food groups. So, I could put in a hunter's lodge. I'm going to stick it up here, just because it covers a wider area, you know? Stick that down there. Now, okay, another thing. Efficiency is incredibly important with this game. So, you want your food production buildings to be near storage barns. Like this. Now, at the moment, we can probably get down there. But later on, you're really going to want to... Get an awful lot of storage bunks, you know, storage is actually, uh, well, the trick to survival, I suppose. So, okay, I'm going to put in a few more builders because I'm kind of annoyed that things aren't being built quickly enough. 
Okay, you've still got homeless people down here. You can see because of the little symbols above their heads, which is rather annoying. So we'll put in a few more houses. The other thing about houses, which you may or may not know, is they increase the number of people who are sort of born in your village. It makes sense, you know, man and a woman move into a house, stuff happens, a child is born. Kind of semi-realistic, but obviously if you've got more houses, you have more children typically. Um, I guess because you don't really want to, you know, have kids with, you know, the same house as your parents. But okay, it's a game mechanic, obviously. Um, so, yeah, at the moment people aren't really doing anything, which is kind of annoying. Um, not entirely sure why. I suppose we're doing various things. Okay, so they're constructing lumber yards, so we should probably stick in a few woodcutters down here. This is pretty self-sustainable, you know. I mean, self-sustaining. Um, so, yeah, it is quite nice. You, you see, you could get rid of the forest entirely and just go with a sort of man-made kind of thing, but it's always more reliable to have gatherers' huts and things. Now... I should probably point out, the hunting cabins aren't awfully efficient at making food, but they do produce leather, which is very important for clothing, and they do produce a source of protein, which again is very good because people need protein who, who does not have meat. Um, okay, I'm going to reduce the number of builders here. There we go. <clears throat> so I suppose you've always got to use what's at your disposal. Uh, so I'm looking here, the storage of tools and clothes are starting to run low. So, oh look, we've got pecans in our orchard. Great, well again, that 15 by four needs one worker. So, you know, that'd be a good source of protein, if not fruit, fruits are nice too. Although that being said, the gatherer site will produce berries, which are obviously fruit. So, I, I guess we're going to put in a tailor and a blacksmith. At the moment, we're doing okay for resources. Actually, looking at it, we're really short on wood. So, this wood here isn't really doing anything. So, I guess we could designate this wood as usable. And because this is quite full up. I think I'll go for another storage yard. I'm looking, we've got food, we've got everything we need apart from wood. Probably one of the reasons it's gone down is because we've got two wood cutters here, but I thought I'd just uh, get a bit of an advantage there. And one of the things we're going to need to do, and this is always painful to do, but it's really worth it, is get some training posts up. Now, I like to typically use four to six training posts. If you have fewer, then trading is quite slow. Like I said, our primary thing for trading is going to be fuel. Now, interestingly, you get one log into the woodcutter and out comes four fuel. So, four firewood. Uh, this is really interesting. Well, well, it's really useful because, well, firewood is typically worth four per unit. So, in other words, uh, logs are worth two. So, well, you can do the math. It's very effective to obviously turn logs into firewood and trade them. Even if it's uh, only trading for three instead of four per unit, which some traders do, it's still worth it, definitely. Okay, as you can see, our little, our little slaves are chopping down the trees here. So that's going straight into... well, here. Okay, I think I'm going to make a bridge across the river so I can actually... Take advantage of this land here because that's quite nice land, isn't it? Great. So we've got our bridge up. Again, if you can't see where the base of the bridge is, you can just click it here. You will see, obviously, we need to put road here. 
So, okay, this is a pretty good setup. One thing we're missing is... A herbalist. This isn't an ideal site for a herbalist. At the moment, this is set to cut and plant. This isn't the most efficient method. Um, the most efficient method of gathering firewood... Well, gathering wood, not firewood. Is to... Basically cut all the trees down. And then to have this, replant them. But I kind of prefer this method. Because it kind of feels more sustainable, you know? Just cutting trees down as and when. And uh, the fantastic thing is... If you make a very efficient... Um, a very efficient little town. And by efficient, I mean having stone houses, then you'll get actually lovely lush forests and a surplus of uh, wood. Um, another good thing to note is this interface part. Here we go. The limits. Okay, now, limits are actually very important. It's kind of... Um, I mean, most Westerners will probably think the best thing to do would be produce unlimited amounts of these resources. So you've got people working all the time. It's very efficient, very... Well, I, I suppose it's more efficient because they're working more. But, you know, actually, it's not good to have people working all the time. They uh, tend to produce too much. It fills up your storage. So it's best to have what you need. Now, typically, every person will use about 100 food a year. So, at the moment, we've got 17 children, 17 adults. So, yeah, 17 plus 7. You, you can do the math. <laughs> um, that's not too much food. I mean, you consider... Okay, how much did this field produce? Okay, 840 beans it produced previous season. Current season, 600 beans. So, you know, you can... That's sustaining 8 people, essentially. So, we've got one person working on the land. He's producing enough food for eight and a half people on the previous season. So, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty efficient. Again, this game is quite interesting because... Well, I should probably focus on playing. But this game is quite interesting because it makes you reevaluate wealth. I mean, we typically think of wealth as being for money in our hand. Um sort of but actually wealth is a surplus of goods it's uh actually having more goods than what you need to live so that that kind of is my definition of wealth now kind of based on actual things you know uh, instead of money which you can print which banks can manufacture out of nothing well literally they can that's the uh, economic system i mean they need to have something like to base the printing of money on but it's pretty flimsy so, okay, why are they building? Okay, we don't have enough wood and we don't have enough stone, so we're going to have to secure both. Um, so there's quite a lot of stone and iron up here, so I need to collect this stone. Remember, when you're in a situation like this, you're quite vulnerable, remember, because you need to get the resources you need to carry on, but... On the other hand, you can run out, <clears throat> which isn't what I've done, but still, I've got to send people all the way up here to get the um, stone. Now, later on, when I get my trading post, I can obviously trade for stone. In fact, why don't we do this now? We've got this nice river running down here. <clears throat> I assume I can, yeah, put trading post on there. As long as it reaches the top and bottom of the map, which this one does, you can put a trading post on it. So, okay, we're getting an income of stone. So they should... Uh, typically, they build things in the order you place them. So if you put a house down, they'll build a house first. Um, or let's say you put one house down, then the other. They'll build the one you put down first, first, and the one, uh, one second, typically. Um, but you can change this through priorities, which are down here. If, for example, I said... Right, you horrible lot, go gather me some stone. Now get sent off to gather that stone up there. And that's going to be a high priority. So, okay, I've got three builders, two labourers. The labourers are going to be collecting the stone. So I'm going to put builders to one, labourers to five. Because the limiting factor here isn't labour force. It is 
the uh, stone. And the wood to a certain extent, but like I said, we've got a fairly renewable source of wood down here, which is kind of good. Okay, what does this need? So, this really is missing the stone. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it here, but I will come back to this so you guys can see what the place looks like when it's a bit more developed. Okay? Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and goodbye for now, for a second. <laughs>